Hi, so a number of strategies can help us improve our ACT scores. This is my strategy number two, picking values for unknowns. So sometimes ACT problems can get complicated with a number of different variables. So we can simplify that by, rather than using the variables throughout the problem, we can pick values for those variables and make the problem a lot simpler. So I've got five problems here from the ACTs that we can um, solve and talk about to show how we're gonna utilize that strategy. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've picked out five different ACT problems that it's gonna show us how to use picking values for unknown as a strategy. So on the first problem, we've got a, a two digit number X. We've got the tens digit is T, the units is U. And then if we switch the number around, then we get Y. And we have to find out what is X minus Y. So rather than working through all the variables, um, let's just pick a number. So let's pick 42 for x. So x is going to be 42. And then we can figure out the other variables from there. So if x is 42, then the tens unit is going to be 4. The unit for the unit is going to be 2. And then the reverse of that for y is going to be 24. And then we're trying to find x minus y. So x minus y is going to be 42 minus 24, or 18. So we have to find out which one of these, with these variables, gets us 18. So let's put it into the first one. 9 times t minus u is going to be 2, and we found it right away. That one's 18. Now, we've got to check all of them because sometimes you pick numbers. That's You don't want to pick numbers that are too easy, like um, 0 and 1. Um, you want to pick easy numbers, but not numbers that are too easy because it might work for multiple ones. So rather than just picking the first one we get to, we just got to take a quick look and make sure that none of the other ones for these particular numbers that we picked is going to work. So if we just run down u minus t, that's going to get us negative 18. So that one doesn't work. 9 times t is going to be 36. 36 minus 2, that's not going to be 18. 9 times u is 18 minus 4. That's not going to be, and it's not 0 either. So you just have to go and check the other ones um, rather than just um, automatically picking the first one that you find. But f is going to be our answer here. Okay, in this problem we have two rectangles. Uh, one has three times the length of the other, uh, but they have the same width. And then we're comparing the two areas. The area of the small one is A, and the area of the larger one is KA. So we're just trying to find out what the multiple of the area is. So let's make a rectangle. We have a rectangle four by two, and then the bigger rectangle is going to be 4, same width, but um, we're going to multiply this by 3. So 2 times 3, this one's going to be 6. And we get 8 versus 24. And clearly you can see that, um, that the larger one is 3 times the smaller one. And so our answer is 3. Right? There's a lot of things you can get confused on, 1 ninth, 1 third. But when you put it into concrete numbers, um, even if you got the answer, uh, without doing this method, this is a good way to check your answer as well, just so you can see concrete um, relationship between these two numbers. Okay, this one has the product of C and 3 is B. And we want to find an expression that represents the sum of C and 3 in terms of B. So this can get a little confusing with just straight variables. So first of all, C and 3, the product is B. So C times 3 equals B. And we want to find the sum of C and 3. So we want to find C plus 3. 
right? So let's pick some numbers here. So let's say um, C is two. And notice when you have a constraint like this, you can't just pick a C and a B because we can start with picking C, but then that determines what our B is gonna be. So if C is two, then two times three, B is gonna be six. Okay, so then um, let's take a look here. We're trying to find C plus three. So C plus three is gonna be two plus three or five. So which one of these is five? All right, so B plus three is gonna be six plus three, which is nine, not that one. Three times B is gonna be 18 plus three, that does not equal five. B plus three is gonna be nine times three, that's not gonna work. B plus three is nine, divided by three is gonna be three, that one doesn't work. And six divided by three is two, two plus three is five, so this one does work, it, that matches our five. So much easier to pick numbers here, and again, if you, if you worked it out without the numbers, the numbers are still a good way to check your answer if you're unsure. Now with percentages, a number to pick is, is 100. 100 usually works, 100 or 200, uh, but a multiple of 100 is the best thing to work at. So if we have 100, and we're gonna increase by 25%, and then decrease by 20%. So if we have 100, if we increase by 25%, so times 0.25 gets us 25, so an increase of 25% gets us to 125. And then we're gonna decrease by 20% off of this number. So 125 times 20% is 25, so 125 minus 25 gets us back to the 100 that we started with. So it gets us to 100%. Okay, so on our last problem here, we have percentages again. Um, I wanna demonstrate what happens here though. So, so percentages, 100 is a good number to pick, right? So we can start with 100. If we have a 23% discount, that means we're gonna save $23 off of 100, and it's gonna be 77. So then we can check, um, we wanna find which one of these expressions um, gets us the, um, the discounted price, so the 77. So let's check, we got, um, for A, we've got 100 minus 0.23 times 100, which is gonna be 100 minus 23, so 77, right? So that one works. Now, you wanna keep going on these, and, and I'll show you why. So let's keep going and be um, 100 minus 0.23, that's obviously not gonna equal 77. Uh, the next one, 100 minus 23 times 100, or 100, minus 2300 is gonna be a negative number. That's not gonna work. On the next one, we get 100 minus 23, and we get 77, so this one also works. So when you're picking numbers, you can get lucky and get two things that, um, that work with the number that you picked. Now, the last one, 0.23 times 100 is going to be 23, but we're looking for the discounted price, not the amount of the discount, so that one doesn't work either. So now, when we get a situation like this, we've got to go back and pick another number um, that's going to get us uh, a distinction between the two. So what if it was 200? So if it was 200, our discount would be $46 or 154 as our answer. So then we can check A and D again. So for A, we've got 200 minus 0.23 times 200, or 200 minus 46, or 154. And that works for A, um, and but for D, we get 200 minus 23, 
which is 177, and that does not work for this. So whenever you get two answers, and that's why you don't want to pick an, um, numbers that are too simple. 100 is usually a good one to pick for um, for uh, percentages, but 200 also works, and it's still pretty easy to work with. But if you do get two answers that work for the numbers that you picked, just go and pick another number. And you don't have to recheck the ones that are out. Once these are out, they're out. So you don't have to, with 200, you don't have to recheck these. You just have to check the two that worked with the 100 and see which one of them works again. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.